you see the little bubbles on the bark of some of the trees around you? These bubbles are filled with sap, which has an amazing smell. If you see some oozing out, give it a sniff and see for yourself. All conifer trees have sap, which they use as a defense against insects that are trying to get to the sweet sugary part of the tree. If they try to get in from an open wound, the sap coming out is so sticky that it traps them and keeps the tree safe. The sap bubbles on this tree is one of the features that can help you identify it as a silver fir. Another way you can identify this tree is by its needles, which are arranged flatly on the branch with a row on top directed towards the tip. Also, if you look very closely at the end of the needles, you should be able to see a notch that some people say looks like a little bum. What's amazing about a forest like this is that at least half of all the life in it actually lives below the ground. One of the most important organisms that lives under there is fungi. Fungi are essential to forests. Think of it this way, you could remove all the birds and still have a forest, but if you remove all the fungi, the forest will die. Fungi are neither plant nor animal. They belong to a category of life that is all their own. You might be picturing a mushroom in your head right now, or you might be looking at one on the forest floor, if the timing is right. But mushrooms are actually only the fruiting body of the fungi, just like an apple is the fruiting body of an apple tree. There are three different lifestyles when it comes to fungi. About half of them are decomposers. They live on decaying matter. Most of the mushrooms that you eat, the ones you can buy in a store, are decomposers and are usually grown on a rotting medium. You might see some of these decomposers growing on the sides of a fallen or standing dead or dying tree, such as bracket fungi or conchs. Without these essential organisms, dead vegetation in the forest would pile so high that the living trees would be submerged. The other half of fungi are living in symbiosis with plants and interlacing with their roots. We call them mycorrhizal. Fungi can spread over several square kilometers. If you picked up just one teaspoon of soil, it might contain several kilometers of string-like hyphae that form what's nicknamed the internet of the forest or the wood wide web. Throughout the forest, trees are all connected below the ground by both their roots and by fungi. Since fungi can't produce their own food, they tap into the roots of the trees and other plants around them, and there's the signaling that goes on and they say, hey, we can help each other out. In exchange, the plants and trees get to use the fungal network for better access to nutrients and water. The fungi are so small that they can then crawl into little soil spaces where tree roots can't grow. It also costs a lot less carbon to support the fungi than it would for the tree to build its own vast root system. The fungus shuttle carbon between themselves, fungus to fungus, but fungi can also connect trees together. Big old trees are hubs for this massive network that pretty much connects all the trees in the forest. Scientists have demonstrated that the underground network can shuttle carbon-based food from a big tree to surrounding trees and that the ones that benefit the most are the youngest, most vulnerable trees. In an old forest where there's not a lot of light, young plants don't have the ability to fix their own carbon very well. They rely on the help and support from the older trees around them. It's really special how the forest works together like a community, or even like a family. The third lifestyle, and only a small fraction of fungi, are parasites. That is, they kill a living host. One example of a parasitic fungi is the white pine blister rust that kills our five needle pines and looks like a bright orange powder on the tree. As you continue to walk along the trail, keep an eye on the trees and forest floor to see if you can spot any mushrooms. <laughs>